So let's talk a little bit about protecting your instruments when you can't protect them. Yeah, that would be something called insurance. Uh, and it's something, if you've got a lot of money tied up in your gear, you probably want to protect it. What if your house would be burglarized or perhaps a fire or some natural disaster? Uh, it would be nice to be able to you know, recover some of that investment you have in your gear. You might want to think about having photographs of your gear as well as serial numbers recorded. Uh, that way, if something does happen, you've got a record of these things. Also, you might think about uh, having a rider on your insurance policy. If your parents or you have a homeowner's policy or a renter's policy, and you can put a rider on it to cover extra instruments, you should. Protecting your gear when you're on the road or touring. Uh, people have been ripped off many, many times, and it's something that will continue happening even after a gig. Uh, there's been cases where people will follow a band 10, 20 miles out of town till they find a hotel that they're crashing at, wait till they go in and then steal their van or their trailer. So some years ago, I played a gig at a place called the Tin Angel in Philadelphia, and uh, we were playing with another act called Antigone Rising. Now, they had a nice tour van that they were cruising in, plus a, uh, a gear trailer behind them, but in big letters splashed aside of it was Antigone Rising. Uh, and I asked him, I said, hey, you're advertising that you're a band in you get this thing filled with gear. Have you ever been ripped off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like two or three times we've been ripped off. And I'm like, doesn't it freak you out when you get up in the morning and your gear is gone? I'm like, well, we have insurance. Uh, when my band is out touring, uh, we've made a practice of uh, bringing all our gear in from the van into the hotel rooms at night. Uh, that way, and it's tiring. It's really tough after driving and gigging and a long day and a long night and then having to carry all your gear maybe up to the second floor, uh, but we've never had anything stolen. So here's a shot of what my standard gigging gear would be. This was uh, at a sound check, and you'll see I've got two 210 cabinets. I've got another rack-mounted bass head with preamps in it. I've got an acoustic guitar amp. I've got my pedal board. I've got a bass, an electric guitar, an acoustic guitar, and a ukulele. Not to mention stands and all my cables and things. I tell you what, sometimes I had no problem moving that gear. And other times, man, I was looking for a hand truck or a dolly or any kind of car that I could get to move that stuff. Because it does get tiring after a while if you're always, always moving gear at the end of the night. Pedals and pedal boards. How many are too many? Uh, I know some people want to have the option of playing everything that they could possibly play, and that's great. And other people like a slim down kind of, this is what I'm going to take to my gig, and this is all I'm going to use, and I'll make it work. And that's fine, too. So you got to figure out what's going to work for you and where your head's at. Are you a gadget guy or gal, or are you like, just keep it basic? For years, I never used a pedal outside of a tuner. I would plug directly in and use my amp to get all my tunings. Now I have a few gadgets that I use, but very few. I like to keep my stuff set uh, as simple and easy to use. Uh, at home, I have some stuff that I use in the studio that I don't take on the road. All right, you have your instrument, you have your gear. What about all the peripheral stuff, all the extra things that you use with it? Do you have a list of that? Let's say as a guitar player, how many guitar cables am I using? What about my strap? What about my capos? What about my wire cutters for putting new strings on and my string winder, my tuners? Uh, I have a bag that I put all that stuff in. That's all things that takes extra time to acquire, to replace. It's all money, and you have to think of it as part of your investment, so you should also have a list of all those other gadgets, whether they be guitar stands or saxophone stands or extra cables and extension cords. Okay, so what about computer gear and uh, outboard gear that you might be using? Uh, a lot of electronic musicians uh, have a whole rig that they use, and you'll find that in some cases, this stuff has to be replaced every couple of years because technology is always changing. You haven't noticed that how computers, it used to be SCSI ports, then it was FireWire ports, then it was USB ports, then it was USB 2 ports, then it was Thunderbolt ports, and you know, they keep changing and changing, and after a while your gear uh, might still work, but you might not have a computer that you can hook it up to, because you've upgraded your computer and suddenly it's not compatible with your outboard gear. 
So always, always keep that in mind when you're buying gear and updating your gear. Make sure that when you update your computer, you can still use your gear. If not, you'll be updating a lot more than just a computer. All right, so that's a couple more things about gear. Uh, I'm sure there's more parts that I can cover, and I'm going to try to update this video so for next year, uh, when I have the opportunity to teach the class, uh, I will uh, have these as supplemental pieces. If you can think of anything that maybe applies to your gear that I should include in this, please drop me an email and let me know because I'll include it next time I update these files. Okay, thanks a lot, folks. Stay tuned. I'm going to have one more lecture for you, and it's going to be kind of a uh, a kind of conclusionary, uh, let's wind this thing up lecture. So, stay tuned.